Hello everybody, today I'm going to talk about my top 20 books that I want to read in 2020. We are now in a new year, it is 2020 and I always like to start off my reading year uh, with this big yearly TBR. Usually I do a top 10, but since we're now in 2020 uh, and it's also the beginning of a new decade, uh, I'm doing a top 20 because, you know, it sounds uh, right, you know, top 20 in 2020. <laughs> I have so many books that I want to read this year, so many reading plans, and it's always going to be, um, you know, sort of a gamble to see if I actually manage to read them all, but it's always, it is nice to start off with this big TBR. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you my top 20 books that I want to read in 2020. So let's get started. So on my absolute number one, if I don't read it this year, then I don't know, but um, one book that I definitely, definitely need to read in 2020 is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. This is her newest book, finally, after the Night Circus. She released a new book in November of last year. Uh, I haven't read it yet. I really want to. Uh, I'm so excited, but you know, it's kind of big and I didn't really have the time anymore in 2019, but I have to read it in 2020 because this book is amazing. I mean, I hope it's going to be amazing. I don't know much about the plot except that it's about a boy who I believe is named Roger and he finds a mysterious book in a sort of library and there's this big puzzle that he has to solve. Um, it's magical realism again and if it's anything like the Night Circus, I know I will love it. Then the next one uh, is one that I'm actually already reading and that is Educated by Tara Westover. This is a non-fiction book. Uh, it's the story of Tara Westover as she grew up kind of off the grid because her family are survivalists so they never went to school or like a hospital so they've never seen any town or society apart from their own family and I believe like the little town uh, close by but it's about her then eventually going to school and discovering that she's very good at maths and uh, that she's very smart and how she gets educated and learns more about the world. So this I think is going to be my first finished read of 2020 because I've already started um, you know with the beginning of it I've only read like 15 pages but so far I'm very much intrigued and that's also one of my reading goals to read more non-fiction like personal stories more books like this and yeah I really hope I will love it. <laughs> Next oh, a book that has been on so many TBRs um, that is The Book of Lost Things by John Connolly. I know I I know I really need to read this and I really hope 2020 is going to be the year. This is a book about a young boy named, uh, I believe it's David. Yes, David. And he loses his mother at a young age and then after that he sort of starts hearing mysterious voices coming out of his books and his story books, yeah, basically. <laughs> and this is also sort of magical realism, I guess. Uh, not completely sure. Also a bit historical fiction because it does take place in what year is it? World War II or one? Not completely sure again. I'm so up to date with all of these books and what they are about apparently, but um, yeah, let's just try it again with the Book of Lost Things. I really need to read it this year. I also desperately need to continue with some book series this year. That's another reading goal of mine to continue with book series and not just start them. Uh, but one series that I want to continue and hopefully finish is uh, the Heroes of Olympus series. So the next book that I need to read in that series is The Mark of Athena by Rick Riordan. And this is a young adult series that's all about the Greek and Roman gods in our modern world. And uh, we have our main character Percy Jackson from the original Percy Jackson series. But then in this series there are a lot of new characters and everything. And it's always about a quest uh, with the gods and everything. I really enjoyed the first two books and I really love the Percy Jackson series so it's time to continue with the rest of uh, this book series. But these books are quite big so ooh, that's maybe going to be uh, yeah, kind of a challenge but yeah, it's, I, I need to continue with some book series, really I do. Then I have one that is maybe a bit older but it's Graceling by uh, Kristen Cashore and it's very reflective as you can see. And this is a fantasy, I don't know if it's young adult, I think so. Um, but it's about this world where some people are Gracelings and they have special powers and it's about uh, the main character is a girl who is very very strong and that's her special power. Don't know much about it apart from that but it was quite popular a couple of years ago on booktube. Now it's a bit older but I've heard nothing but good reviews about this series and it's also the first book in a book series but it's more like a book series with different stories in the same world and that it's a continuing story I believe. But it sounds very intriguing and I really want to read some books that are maybe a bit older you know that maybe wouldn't have all the hype right now but uh, I can't wait to see 
uh, to find out what I'm going to think of this one. For my next read, I have A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. Um, I believe, uh, I don't know much about the plot again, but this is a book with very uh, praising reviews. I believe it's about five men and their lives and I do also think that at some point it gets quite tragic and emotional and that it's not a very happy book overall but it is one that as I said before has like raving reviews and one of the best books ever and everything and um, it sounds very intriguing so I don't think I need to read this when I'm feeling like a light uplifting book but I definitely want to see what this book is actually about and uh, yeah I hope I will love it as well and maybe feel all the emotions uh, that this book will bring. I also want to read The Grey Share by Kim Liggett. Liggett. Mm. And this is a book about uh, it's young adult and uh, all the girls in their 16th year have this grey share and they have special powers and I don't know much about it apart from that. I know, I know. But it's a new young adult book. I mean, relatively new. Uh, what I've heard from it so far is quite positive. Uh, I don't read that many YA books anymore. Um, but this one sounds like sort of like a classic YA story. And I cannot wait to see what I'm going to think of it. And it just sounds interesting and... Uh, you know, maybe a bit easier to get through than some of the like big fantasy books I have on this list. And also I do like the pretty pink cover. I don't know, it's it's pretty. <laughs> Ooh, and then also this big boy, The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Such a big book, I know, I know. I feel like a lot of people have this book on the TBRs. Um, but also a lot of people are intimidated by its size. But this year is going to be the year that I read it. I have to find, you know, time and... Uh, really make time for it to read it and not be too intimidated by the size and uh, it's just so pretty it's a brick of a book but it's so pretty and huge and I love the cover and everything all I know is that it's fantasy and there's this queendom with a queen and there's also a love interest and everything and I don't know much about it um, I also think it's sort of divided in six parts and that you can also sort of read it in parts if you don't want to be too intimidated. And that's all I know, really. Um, but this year is going to be the year I read it, I promise. Then two books from the same series. I have the Well of Ascension and the Hero of Ages book uh, 2 and 3 in the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. I read The Final Empire at the end of 2019 and I loved it so so much. It was amazing. So this year I'm going to finish this trilogy because I'm not going to wait an entire year before I pick up the next book because otherwise I will be completely out of it and now I really have sort of like the reading mojo with this series and it's so good and I cannot wait for, to see what's going to happen next and you know what is going to happen to all these characters that have come to love and the story and the fantasy world and uh, I just I want to read a lot of Brandon Sanderson this year and um, again these are big books but I really need to make the time for it because it's worth it. Then for more book series that I need to finish, I have again Dreams of Gods and Monsters by Lainey Taylor. This one is like a recycling from my uh, TBR for 2019, but I still have not read it. And I read the first two books and I loved them, but the thing is like it's beautiful, but sometimes they can be a bit slow. It's kind of a weird series, but I do love Lainey Taylor's writing style, but somehow I just keep putting reading this one off but i really want to finish it you know i should finish the series or either unhaul it or anything i cannot just have it um lying around and not read it i want to know how it's going to end and it is beautiful and everything so michelle if you're watching this in the future read it you have to finish this series <laughs> and now some historical fiction because i need to read historical fiction my life is not complete without it i have dissolution by sj sensen Sensum. And uh, this is a book about a lawyer during the time of King Henry VIII. And what was he called? I believe Matthew Shardlake. And it's the beginning of a book series. It takes place during the, uh, you know, dissolution of the monarchies. Uh, the beginning of the Church of England and the break with the Catholic Church. So a piece of history that I'm very, very much interested in. I love it so much. And um, I need to read this book desperately because I love this so much and I cannot wait to read something about it uh, from maybe a different angle because usually I'm very much interested in like the six wives of Henry VIII and this is something maybe a bit different um, but it sounds amazing. I also have a classic on this list and that is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Platt which is uh, very much inspired by her own life and it's about uh, the main character what she called Esther Greenwood dealing with depression in the 1950s uh, in America? I'm not sure. 
yeah, New York. And uh, what I've heard from this book is that it's very, very emotional and very raw and very real. So again, not a very uplifting book, um, but it sounds beautiful and like something I just, I want to read it and I want to know what it's all about. Uh, it's not a very big one, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, yeah, but uh, I'm going to read it this year. At least I'm hoping so, and uh, hopefully it will make me feel all the emotions. Then I have Misery by Stephen King, uh, the very first Stephen King book that I'm ever going to read, and it's going to happen in 2020. This book is about a writer who has this very famous book series, and the main character is called Misery, but in his, in his latest book he kills her off, and then he gets kidnapped by a uh, fan of the books who is not agreeing with him killing her off. So that sounds so intriguing. Like I love the premise of this book so much. I hope I will love the book itself as well. I think this one will be quite a good uh, book to start with like figuring out if I like Stephen King or not. He's definitely an author that I want to give a chance. And who knows, maybe this year is going to be the year that I discover Stephen King. And I really hope he will be one of my new all-time favorite authors. But yeah, we'll just have to see to find out. Next up, Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames. This is again a book that I'm recycling from uh, my top 10 TBR from a year ago. This is a fantasy book, but it's sort of like very casual fantasy, kind of like inspired by this mercenary band that is sort of rock and rollish. At least that's what I've heard of it. Uh, I don't know much about the story apart from that. I believe the daughter of one of the uh, members of this mercenary band is kidnapped or in danger and they have to reunite to save her. That's all I know. And this is again a book um, that has been on my TBR for so long and I need to read it this year because it sounds amazing. I love fantasy and this one sounds so cool somehow. And again a book I've heard nothing but good reviews about. Um, so yeah, uh, hopefully it's going to happen this year. I really, I really hope so. <laughs> the next book is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. This is a historical fiction slash sort of uh, murder mystery. There's this, I think it's a boy, uh, who's found dead and then everybody suspects this girl named Kyla who is um, sort of like a mysterious wild girl that nobody knows uh, much about. That's all I know about the plot. Also, it takes place in the 1960s, 1970s. So, you know, a bit historical fiction. This is a book that so many people love so much. And it has been on my radar for so, so long. But I finally picked up like the new smaller paperback. Because I just prefer reading this kind of format to like a big paperback somehow. But, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I saw it at the bookstore recently and I wanted to pick it up. So I did. And um, I'm pretty sure this is a book that I'm going to love uh, according to like all the reviews and knowing my personal reading taste. So again, a book I want to read in 2020. It's part historical fiction, part murder mystery. Uh, yeah, something I will love, hopefully. I also have The Beer and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. And this is a magical realism book that takes place in Russia. It's about a girl named Vasha who is... I'm very much intrigued by like stories and myths and mythology in general and this sort of magical atmosphere. But I also think that she's supposed to get married because she's old enough for that, but she's not interested in that. This is the first book uh, in a trilogy. The entire trilogy is out now. What I've heard from it is that it's very magical, atmospherical, beautiful, and yeah, all those things are things that I love in books. I also heard that it can be a bit slow, but I don't mind that too much. Um, this is a book series and everybody says that it's just it just gets better with every book in this series. And that it's amazing and beautiful and very wintry. So I really want to read it uh, during the winter. So I shouldn't leave this one on my TBR for too long. Uh, I want to read this soon. like Because I think it's very fitting for the more wintry months of the year. Next book is A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. And this is the story of the Trojan War. But told from the female perspectives. I am a big fan of Greek mythology. And I always love retellings. And then with this one especially. And I haven't heard a lot of people talk about about it. I know Ashley from a frolic through fiction uh, really loved this one so there's where I got the recommendation and um, yeah it just it sounds beautiful and I cannot wait to read more mythology inspired books this year. Talking about mythology inspired books uh, hopefully this is also going to be the year where I read Circe or Kirke as I was taught to pronounce it at school back in the day but yeah, let's just call it Cersei to make it more easy, I guess. And this is a retelling of the story of the sorceress Cersei. And this is also part of the Odyssey? Odi yeah, Odyssey, I think. And again, a story from Greek mythology. Love that very much. 
need to read this because it has been on my TBR for quite a while and it's so pretty. It's like one of the prettiest books that I own. I cannot get enough of the cover and it's time that I finally read it this year. So more Greek mythology for me. And then for the final and 20th book of this TBR, I really hope I've counted right, but otherwise let's just pretend it's 20 books. Uh, but the final one is Silka's Journey by Heather Morris. This is the sort of sequel to The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris. Um, and it tells the story of a woman named Silka who was also a character in that book and someone who has really existed. It's based on a true story and it's more in-depth about her life and what she went through and um, I really love to read about true stories from Auschwitz and World War II. They are always so impactful and I think it's important that these stories get told and that you learn about them, what they went through and what really happened and um, yeah, I cannot wait to read this. I really love The Tattooist of Auschwitz. It was one of my favorite books of last year. And I hope this one will be just as beautiful and impactful. So yeah, that was it for 20 books that I want to read in 2020. I don't know how I'm going to make a thumbnail with all of these books yet, but um, wish me luck. <laughs> I'm so excited for all of these books, which is always the case with TBRs. They make me so excited about the books that I need to read. And uh, yeah, I cannot wait for this year to be an amazing reading year. I'm sure it will be just as great as 2019 was. But this was it then for this video. And I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, maybe go subscribe or give it a thumbs up. Because as always, I would really appreciate that. And hopefully I will see you again very soon in my next video. Bye!